Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I will be teaching you how to make a shrug. As you know, I've been feeling shrugs lately, and for this one I decided to bring my love of high necklines along too. This one's going to be a spring-summer staple. Speaking of, if you're looking to grow your warm weather wardrobe with some new crochet makes, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern casual crochet tutorials and patterns fit for spring and summer with new patterns weekly so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show so without further ado. For this project any category 4 yarn will work. But I used a total of 315 grams of yarn, and that's roughly 700 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite type of takeout. I've had a decent amount, but as of recently, it's been Chinese. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using 3 stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain that starts one inch underneath our underarm down to above our chest, so it's going to be a pretty small chain. I need roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain seven. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started with our row one. Our row one is going to start with a decrease of two half double crochets. So let's all block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And to start with our decrease, we're all going to yarn over. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to bring our hook down. Underneath that third chain, pull through for three loops on our hook. Then into that following chain, pull through for four loops on our hook. When we have all four of those loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over. Pull through all four, and from there we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So to do a regular half double crochet, we're all going to yarn over, insert into that following chain, pull through, pull through all three, and again yarn over into that following chain, pull through, pull through all three. Continue until we have one chain left. We should all have just one chain left, and into that last chain we're now going to do an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over, into that last chain we're going to insert with one half double crochet, and then also into that last chain with a second half double crochet, and now our row one is complete. Now the decrease portion is the bottom of our piece, so we will be inserting a stitch marker into the beginning of this row, just so we know where we're going to be decreasing. Now our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So it's all chain one, that doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and flip our work. Now we're just going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Finding that last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert in through that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook. There's our first back loop slip stitch, let's do this again. Into that next stitch, insert in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise the following row could be a little too tight to work into. Now that our back loop slip stitch row is finished, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows, all within the back loops. So just to get started on our following half double crochet row together, let's all chain two and flip our work. Now to start with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, we're all going to yarn over. Find that last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop, pull through into that following stitch's back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, 
yarn over, pull through all four, then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now we should all have just one stitch left. Into that last stitch, we're going to insert with two back loop half double crochets, and that is going to be our increase of two, so there's one, and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet. And our falling row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So just chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, and then I will meet you back right after a slip stitch row. So we are back, and the first half of our underarm is finished. I have a total of four rows, and my width is roughly an inch or two centimeters, and now we're going to finish up our underarm with a portion that's going to curve up a little bit smoother, working our way up to our shoulder. So from here, we're going to maintain starting our half double crochet rows with a decrease of two. So since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, let's chain two and flip our work. Now starting this row with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, yarn over, into that first stitch is back loop, pull through, second stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through all four, and continue with one back loop half double crochet until we have one stitch left. We should all have just one stitch left, and now we're going to close off this row with an increase of three back loop half double crochets. So yarn over. Into that last stitch is back loop, we're going to insert with one, into that same back loop with two, and then into that same back loop with three back loop half double crochets. And now we're going to be increasing into our back loop slip stitch row as well. So from here we're all going to chain two. That first chain is going to count as a stitch, that second chain is going to count as our turning chain. Now let's flip our work. We're all going to start by inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So bring your hook down, into that back loop, we're going to insert our hook. Then yarn over, pull through everything on our hook per usual, and from here continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're now going to continue to repeat these two rows. So our back loop half double crochet rows is always going to start with a decrease of two, and now it's going to end with an increase of three back loop half double crochets, and our slip stitch row will have an increase into it as well. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we now have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to about mid collarbone, and I'll meet you back right after a back loop half double crochet row. All right, so I am back, and I have just finished up the total of my underarm portion. I have seven rows now, my total width is two inches or five centimeters unstretched. And now from here, since we all should have ended right after our back loop half double crochet row, we're all going to make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. Now I already have my chain. I needed a total of four and a half inches or 11 centimeters, so I made a chain of 22. Once we have our chain, we're going to do our following row in our row sequence, which is a back loop slip stitch row. So all we're gonna do is just block off that last chain and do a chain one. And into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So this is per usual, just insert, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next chain, insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Then once we reach the body, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. We made our way down with our slip stitch row. Now from here, we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet row for the shoulder portion, but along the bottom, we're only going to be decreasing into every other half double crochet row now. So since we made our way down with our slip stitch row and our previous half double crochet row did start with a decrease, our following or our second shoulder row is not gonna have a decrease. So from here, just chain two and flip your work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and I'll meet you back after the following back loop slip stitch row just to remind you that we're gonna be decreasing into every other half double crochet row. We are back and we should all have our first one, two, three shoulder rows finished up. We should be along the bottom right after back loop slip stitch row. Now I'm back just to remind you that we're going to be decreasing into every other half double crochet row so since we did not start our previous half double crochet row with a decrease, we're gonna start our following one with a decrease. 
So from here, chain two and flip your work and start this following row with a decrease. So yarn over into that first stitch is back loop, pull through that next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through all four and continue with one back loop half double crochet to reach the end of the row. But don't forget, since we started this half double crochet off with a decrease, insert a stitch marker into the edge of this row just so it's a little bit easier for us to keep track of. We're gonna continue to repeat these rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And then a back loop half double crochet row where we start every other back loop half double crochet row off with a decrease until we have a shoulder portion that can reach from mid collarbone over to the base of our neck. And then I will meet you back along the bottom or right after back loop slip stitch row so we can get started on the neckline. We are back and our shoulder portion is all finished. I have a total of 14 rows and my width is just about three and a half inches or nine centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to get started on our neckline. So what we're going to do from here is continue on with our back loop half double crochet rows and back loop slip stitch rows, but it's going to be a neck scoop. So start by inserting your stitch marker into any stitch that you have from the top that's nearest to our collarbone. I've inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch from the top that's just about three inches or eight centimeters. And now from here, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're going to do our half double crochet row up. But we are still going to start every other half double crochet row with a decrease. So as you guys can see, my previous half double crochet row did not have a decrease into it because I don't have a stitch marker in there. So my following half double crochet row will have a decrease and it's going to be the same decrease that we've been doing. So all I'm going to do is chain two, flip my work, start my following row with a decrease. If you guys do not have to start your following row with a decrease, don't do one but continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. So I've made my way all the way up with my following half double crochet row. And now from here, all we're gonna do is continue on with our back loop half double crochet row, remembering to start every other row with a decrease, and then with a back loop slip stitch row right after that, until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm all the way over to mid chest. And then I'll meet you back right after a half double crochet row, and then we can get started on mirroring the other side of the front panel. So we are back and I have just finished up the first half of my neckline. Now from here, we're going to do our middle row, which is just going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So from where we're at, let's all chain one and flip our work. This is pretty simple. Just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. But when we are a few stitches into this row, we just wanna make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the top of this row so we know where the middle row is when we do our collar. So our middle row is finished and now we're going to mirror everything we did here on the other side. So what we're going to do is get started on our following half double crochet row. Now our following row may be a little bit different for everyone depending on what our previous half double crochet row was. So since we are going to be mirroring our rows, we're gonna take a look at our previous half double crochet row. And if we started that row with a decrease, then we're gonna start this following row with an increase. But as you guys can see, my previous half double crochet row did not have a decrease. So I'm going to do a half double crochet row. And then just like our other side, our back loop slip stitches don't have any decreases into them. And I'm gonna do a back loop slip stitch row after that row. So I'm going to be getting my two following rows finished up. For those of you that do need to start your following row with an increase, hang tight to the next clip and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So I am back. I am two rows past my middle row and now my following half double crochet row is going to start with an increase because if we take a look at the other side of our piece, that half double crochet row started with a decrease. So all together, all we're gonna do is chain two and flip our work. And how that's gonna work is just putting two back loop half double crochets into that first stitch. So there's one, and then there is two into that same first back loop. And from here, continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And from here, we're gonna continue to repeat our back loop half double crochet row where we do an increase into every other half double crochet row and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as this first portion of our neckline, not counting that middle row. And we do also wanna make sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into the beginning of that half double crochet row where we do our increase. I'll meet you back when we have our rows finished up so we can work straight into the shoulder from there. I am back. My second half of my neckline is all finished. I now have a total of 29 rows. My width is roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And now from here, we're gonna get started on our shoulder portion. So from here, we all should have ended along the top. We're all going to make a chain, I already have mine finished, of the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. 
So for those of you that have my numbers, I skipped a total of 12 stitches. So over here, I made a chain 12. And from here, all we're gonna do is do the following row in our row sequence, which is a back loop slip stitch row. So all we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then we're going to continue to do our back loop half double, remembering that we are still going to be increasing into every other back loop half double crochet row and a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as this first shoulder portion right over here. Once we do, we should all end along the bottom and then I'll meet you back so we can finish off our front panel with our underarm. So we are back and our second shoulder portion is all finished up. I have a total of 36 rows. My width is now nine inches or 23 centimeters and now we're gonna finish up with our two underarm sections. So first things first, we're all going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to the top of our shoulder. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 22. So along this side, from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 22nd stitch. Now for the underarm portion, we are going to be starting every single half double crochet row now with an increase. So from where we're at, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, start the following row with an increase of two back loop half double crochets, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we have three stitches left right before our stitch marker. So we have our first underarm row nearly finished. We started it with an increase of two back loop half doubles, and we left one, two, three stitches right before our stitch marker. Now from here, we're going to do a decrease of three half double crochets because we did an increase of three on the other side. So let's all yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all five. Now our first underarm row is finished. Now, since we did an increase into the slip stitch rows on the other side, we're gonna have to start this falling slip stitch row with a decrease as well. So we're all gonna chain one and flip our work. So to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches, how that's gonna work is find that last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through. Then also insert your hook into that following stitches back loop. When we have these three loops on our hook, just automatically yarn over and pull through all three and continue on with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. From here, we are going to be repeating these two previous rows. So every half double crochet row is now gonna start with an increase of two back loop half double crochets, and it's going to end on a decrease of three back loop half doubles. And then our back loop slip stitch row is going to start with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. We're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the second underarm portion on the other side. When we do, I will meet you back, and as a quick tip, we should all end right after back loop half double crochet row. Now we are back with the first half of our underarm portion. Now we're gonna close it off with the second half. So getting the second half started off with, we are going to do a back loop slip stitch row. That's not gonna have any increases or decreases. So from where we're at, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Our back loop slip stitch row is finished. Now let's get started on our following row. Chain two and flip our work. So for this portion, every half double crochet row is still gonna be starting with an increase. So into that first stitch's back loop, insert with two back loop half double crochets. And after that, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches now. All right, so we are back and we have one, two stitches left. All we're gonna do is finish the row off with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets. So yarn over and insert your hook into that second to last back loop and also into that last stitch's back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. And from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and a back loop half double crochet row that starts with an increase of two back loop half doubles and ends with a decrease of two back loop half doubles. We're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first portion of our underarm. We should all end right after back loop half double crochet row. We should end with the same amount of stitches as chains that we made and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are done and we have just finished up the entirety of our front panel. Now let's get started on our back panel. So let's put this off to the side. So getting started on our back panel, we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for our front panel. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain seven. So for my back panel, I'm gonna start with a chain seven. 
Once we have our chain, we're going to do a half double crochet row. Now for the back, the bottom is going to be completely blunt. So all we're going to do is block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And just start with one half double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook and simply put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So now that we put one half double crochet into every chain, we've left the last one and into that last one, we're going to insert with an increase of two half double crochets and that's just two half double crochets into that last chain. Our following row is going to be a slip stitch row. So chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that our back loop slip stitch row is all finished up, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of two and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our underarm portion for the front panel. Once we have the same amount of rows, we should all end right after back loop slip stitch row and I'll meet you back so we can finish up our underarm with the second portion. All right, so the first half of my underarm portion for my back panel is finished. I had a total of four underarm rows for my front panel, so I have four right here. Now we're going to do those rows that curved straight up to our shoulder that made it a little bit nicer to look at. So, like I said, we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases for the back panel. From where we're at, we should have all ended right after back loop slip stitch row, so chain two, flip our work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one now. We have reached our last stitch, and now, just like the front panel, we're going to be doing an increase of three back loop half double crochets. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And remember for this portion of the front panel, we did do an increase into the slip stitch row as well. So from here, we're going to chain one, that's going to count as a stitch, and chain two, that's going to count as our turning chain, and we're going to flip our work. Into that second chain from our hook, we're going to bring our hook down underneath that back loop with our first back loop slip stitch and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, continue to repeat these two rows for the same amount of curve up to our shoulder rows as the front panel. And just like the front panel, we should all end right after back loop half double crochet row. All right, so we are back with the second half of our underarm portion. Just like for my front panel, for the entirety of my underarm portion, I had a total of seven rows, so I have a total of seven rows here. Now from here, we're going to do the width of the back panel. So this is gonna be pretty simple. We're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the front panel that led all the way up to the top of our shoulder. Now for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 22. And from here, all we're gonna do is do back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows from our first shoulder row all the way across to our last shoulder row. And I'll meet you back when we have that finished up so we can get started on the underarm. And we do wanna make sure that when we're doing our back panel, we are inserting our stitch marker into the same middle row that we have for the front panel. I am back and the width of my back panel is finished. Now what we're going to do from here is the underarm portion. So, first things first, we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to the top of our shoulder, and that's the same as the front panel. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain of 22. So from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 22nd stitch. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our underarm. So our underarm is done in two parts. This portion is going to be the one where we end on a decrease of three back loop half doubles, and then decrease into our slip stitch row as well. So just like how we did the front panel, but without all the increases or decreases. So as a refresher, chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three. We should all have one, two, three stitches left. From here, yarn over, insert into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through and into that last back loop, pull through for five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five, chain one to get started on our slip stitch row and flip our work. Now let's start our following slip stitch row and that's gonna start with a decrease. Into that last stitch's back loop, pull through, into that following stitch's back loop, when we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as our second underarm portion. When we do, I will meet you back to finish up our underarm portion and as a quick tip, we should all end right after a half double crochet row. So the first half of our underarm portion is finished. Now let's finish it up with the second half and it's gonna start with a slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. At the end of the row, chain two, 
Flip our work, one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two, and I'll meet you back to decrease once more. Our back loop slip stitch row is finished, and we've made our way back up with our back loop half double, leaving the last two. Now we're going to do a decrease of two half doubles. So yarn over, into that second to last, pull through, and into that last, pull through for four loops, then yarn over, pull through all four. Then repeat these two rows un until we have the same amount of total rows as our other underarm portion. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so now that both our front and back panel are all finished, we're ready to seam everything together. So we're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning all the ribbing that we have is faced each other. So the back panel's ribbing is faced up, the front panel's ribbing is faced down. Then we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to do a single crochet seam working in through both the front and the back panel, and we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and two single crochet into every side half double crochet row. So let's get this started. This is the first side row, and it should be a slip stitch for everyone, so find that top loop, insert into the front panel, find the first side slip stitch row within the back panel, insert into that top loop, and single crochet once. This is our following side row, which should be a half double crochet, so find that top loop within the front panel, find the same top loop within the back panel, and single crochet once, and we're going to be doing a second single crochet as well. And it should be a little bit easier since everything should already be gathered, so just work in through both the front and the back panel, and single crochet. And that's it! We're going to continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Alright, so now that our shoulders are all seamed up, let's get started on seaming our sides. So first things first, we're now going to flip our work right side out, meaning the ribbing that we have for the front and back panel are along the outside, or the shoulder seam is along the inside, and we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're now going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So insert your hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do from here is find that first stitch into the front panel, and insert only into that front loop, find that first stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And we're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Alright, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out now, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the last stitch that we have into our side seam, and then we're going to do a single crochet row. Now making sure that we're working clockwise or to the left, all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then one single crochet into every stitch. So let's do that together. Let's all start by finding our first side row, it should be a side half double crochet for everyone. So find that top loop, and insert with one single crochet, and if you're like me, you should have some tail ends, so go ahead and place that over your hook if you don't want to weave them in later, and single crochet around everything. And since this is a side half double, one more single crochet into the same side row. Now we should have two single crochets starting off this first row. Now our following row is a side slip stitch row. So from here, we're just going to find that top loop, insert your hook with just one single crochet. And we're going to continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. Now I have just finished up single crocheting up my underarm portion. I don't have any more side rows left to work into, so all I'm going to do from here is put one single crochet into every stitch, making my way all the way up and over. Before we move on though, we just want to make sure that we keep track of the amount of stitches that we have for this portion, because it's going to come in handy for the following two rows. Now for those of you that have my numbers, I did a total of 11 single crochets right here. So I'm going to keep that number in mind, but I'll meet you back once when this row is finished. Alright, so our first single crochet row is finished. Our following row is going to be a slip stitch row. So now that we've made our way all the way around, let's close off the row and then start our slip stitch row. What we're going to do to finish off this row is slip stitch into that chain space that we made, and we are finished. But we do want to make sure that that slip stitch that we did to connect the end to the beginning of the row 
that stitch right there does not count as a stitch because it could look like an extra one. So just keep track of the amount of stitches that you have and make sure that you're not accidentally working into there because then we will be accidentally increasing, which is not what we want for this pattern. But anyways, getting started on the following row, we're going to chain one. Now we're gonna flip our work so that we're able to see the ribbing of the back loop slip stitch rows and then just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then slip stitch into that chain space and I'll meet you back to get started on the following row. All right, so our first two rows are finished. Let's get started on our following half double crochet row. So let's all chain one and flip our work. So we're all gonna start with back loop single crochets because we need our shoulder portion to curve over our shoulder. So what we're going to do is put one back loop single crochet for the same amount of stitches that we had for our underarm. So remembering a few clips ago, I told you guys to remember the amount of stitches that you had for your underarm. I had 11. So I will now be doing 11 back loop single crochets. So let's all start by finding that first available stitch and insert into that back loop with one single crochet. And I'll continue this until I have my amount of single crochets that I need. So now that I have my back loop single crochets, which I should have 11, into everyone's following two stitches, they're gonna be doing a decrease of two back loop singles. So how we do that is insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, pull through into that following stitches back loop, pull through for three loops on our hook, then we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. Then we're gonna put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the same amount of single crochets that we just did, so 11 for me, plus an additional two for that decrease that we're gonna do as well. So since I had a total of 11 single crochets plus two, I will meet you guys back when I have 13 stitches left. Alrighty, so I've made my way all the way around with my back loop half double crochets, and I have left my 13 stitches. Now from here, we're going to start off with a decrease of two back loop singles. So insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, pull through into that following stitches back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, then finish up the row with one back loop single crochet into the rest of our stitches, and that should be the same amount of stitches that we did on the top of our underarm. Now everyone's first one, two, three rows are finished. Our following row is going to be another back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So right after we've slip stitched into that chain space, chain one, flip your work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we get a shoulder portion that can curve around our shoulder and is also going to become nice and snug around our arm. Now I wanna make sure that it doesn't become too tight because this is going to be for the length of our sleeve as well, but just until it gets to a comfortable fit. I'll meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row and then we can get started on the evening out portion of our sleeve. All right, I am back with my shoulder portion. I now have a total of 26 rows. It's nice and snug on my arm and my length from the underarm portion is roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. Now we're just going to continue with our half double crochet row. I use air quotes because our half double crochet rows are still gonna start with our single crochets, but now without any decreases until we get a portion that when we wear it can lay horizontally on our arm. So from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, all we're gonna do is chain one and flip our work. Now from here, we're gonna continue to do our back loop single crochets for the same amount of single crochets that we've been doing for our previous rows. So for those of you that have my numbers, I was doing 11 back loop single crochets, so I'm about to do 11 back loop single crochets again. And now that we have our back loop single crochets, all we're gonna do is work straight into our back loop half double crochets and continue on with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the same amount of stitches as single crochets that we just made then finish off the row with one back loop single crochet into the rest of our stitches. Our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, so no increases and no decreases into there ever. And we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until this portion of our sleeve can lay completely horizontal on our arm when it's worn. I'll meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row, and then we can get started on the length of our sleeve from there. All right, so we are back with our evening out rows. I now have a total of 30 rows, my length now is roughly five inches or 12 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to work on the length of our sleeve. So now they're going to be actual half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until we reach our elbow. And then back loop slip stitch rows with no decreases as well. So from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, we're now going to chain two and flip our work. And all we're gonna do is make our way around with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So we made our way around with our back loop half double crochet row. 
And now to close off our half double crochet row, all we're gonna do is count up the two chains that we made when we started this row, slip stitch into that second chain, and now the half double crochet row is closed. From here, we're just gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we're ready to start our decrease, which is roughly around where our elbow is, but if yours is a little bit higher or a little bit lower, that's completely fine as well. It is up to you and how snug you want your sleeve to be. But either way, I'll meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row so that we can start tapering in our sleeve. All right, so I am back with the length of my sleeve. I have a total of 56 rows now. My length is now 10 and a half inches or 27 centimeters. And now we have just a little bit more of our sleeve to do, but I'm right past my elbow. So I'm just going to want to start to decrease. And that's gonna be pretty simple. It's going to be within the half double crochet rows and it's just going to start and end with a decrease. So since we all should have ended on a slip stitch row, let's all chain two and flip our work. We're just gonna start and end this row off with a decrease. So yarn over into that first stitch is back loop, insert pull through, into that next stitch is back loop, insert pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. From here, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two so we can decrease together once more. So we made our way all the way around with our back loop half double crochets, leaving the last two stitches, and now we're gonna do a decrease again. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last stitch's back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and we're now finished with our half double crochet row. So again, to close it off, just slip stitch into that second chain. And then our back loop slip stitch row still isn't gonna have any increases or decreases, so just one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're just going to continue to repeat our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row until we want to do our decrease again. Now the decrease rows is going to be completely up to you. You can have it in a sequence, so you can decrease into every 10th row, every fifth, or you can just randomly decrease until the sleeve tapers down to your liking. It is completely up to you. Either way, I will meet you back once we have the length of the sleeve that we want right after back loop slip stitch row. And then we can get started on our cuff. All right, so we are back and the entirety of my sleeve is all finished. Now I have a total of 80 rows. And just to let you guys know, for those of you that want my numbers, I decreased into my 57th, 63rd, 69th, and 75th row. Now the total length of my sleeve is roughly 17 inches or 43 centimeters. And now we're going to get started on our cuff. So since we all should have ended right after a back loop slip stitch row, let's all chain one, flip our work. Now the first row for our cuff is going to be a back loop single crochet row. So all we're gonna do is just make our way around putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch and then slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so we are back with our back loop, single crochet row. Now from here, we're all going to make a chain the length that we would like for our cuff to be. Now for those of you that want to have the thumb hold just like me, I made sure that I tried my piece on and I made my chain all the way up until my knuckle so that I had left enough space for my thumb. So that chain was roughly six inches or 15 centimeters for me and that was a total of 28 chains. And now we're going to do a slip stitch row back down. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. Let's do this again. Into this next chain, insert, pull through everything. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain. So we have made our way all the way down with our slip stitch row. We're now going to connect it into the base. So let's all start by finding that next available stitch. We're going to insert our hook in through there with a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. Now in order to work our way up to the following row, all we're gonna do is slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. We're now going to flip our work and do a back loop slip stitch row all the way back down. So finding that first stitch from our previous row, not those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert in through that back loop and pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. So we are back and we have nearly finished our first one, two, three rows and now we're just gonna connect it into the base together once more. It's gonna be connected into the base the same way that we did our previous row. So just into that next available stitch into the base, 
insert with a slip stitch, still doesn't count as a stitch, and then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into the following stitch into the base, also does not count as a stitch, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases and I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then we can seam it all up together. So I am back. I have made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows and now we're ready to seam it together. Now this seam is going to double as our seam and for our thumb holes. So right before we get started on the seam, what we're going to do is try on our piece and then we're going to insert our stitch markers into the stitches that we have that is on either side of our thumb. So for those of you that want my numbers, I've inserted my first stitch marker into the fifth stitch from the outer edge and then my second stitch marker into the 16th stitch from the base. And this cutout right here is going to be for my thumb hole. And what we're gonna do is an outside loop slip stitch seam. So since we already know how to do this, let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And since we already know how to do this, we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop into that first available stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, and pull through everything. And we're gonna continue this until we reach our stitch marker. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So I finished up the first portion of my seam and I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now from here, making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we are going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to the base and then continue to do our outside loop slip stitch seam until we reach this second stitch marker. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so we are back. The entirety of both of our sleeves are all finished up. Now we're gonna get started on our collar. So first things first, we're going to need to do a single crochet row. So we're all gonna start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out. Right side up, we're gonna flip our work over to look at the back and then we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows we have along the neckline. And all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, two single crochet into every side half double crochet row, and then once we reach the front, one single crochet into every stitch making our way down. And we're just gonna continue that making our way all the way around. So just to do the first few, we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now my first side row that I have right here is a side half double crochet row. So all I'm gonna do is find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one and then there's two and then into my following side row, which is a side slip stitch row, I'm gonna find that top loop and insert into there with just one single crochet. We're gonna continue making our way all the way around with our single crochet row, making sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into that middle row that we have within the front and the back panel and that middle row is going to be that side slip stitch row that we have our stitch markers into, making sure that we insert our stitch marker within the front and the back panel. Make your way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. Do a chain up of one and cut and then I will meet you back. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our single crochet row and we did do a chain up of one and cut. Now we're gonna get started on the height of our collar. So we're all gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then taking a look at the front panel, we're gonna insert our hook into that middle stitch, which is our stitch marker stitch, and we're all going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We are going to pull through, and we're all gonna start by making a chain the height that we'd like the front of our collar to be, keeping in mind it is going to get a little bit taller along the back. I'd like for the start of my collar to be just about two inches or five centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain 10. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and we're going to slip stitch into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, with one slip stitch, and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. We have now put one slip stitch into every chain, and now we're gonna connect it into the base. So into that next available stitch into the base that we have, we are going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through everything, just to connect that first row. Then we're going to work our way up to the following row, which is going to be a slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That slip stitch isn't gonna count as a stitch either and flip our work. From here, we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that last stitch from our previous row, which is not those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert into that back loop with a slip stitch and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. 
Now that we're at the end of our row two, at the end of every even number row, we're going to end it with a chain two. Now that first chain is gonna count as a stitch for the following row. That second chain is gonna count as our turning chain and flip our work. For this portion of our collar, getting started on every odd number row, we're gonna insert our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop, then yarn over and pull through everything. And continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the base, connect it into the base the same way that we just did. And from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows. So at the end of every even number row, which should be along the outside, we're going to chain two. That first chain is gonna count as a stitch. That second chain is gonna count as a turning chain. Flip our work, slip stitch into that second chain from our hook, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We are going to continue to repeat that until we have the total collar length that we would like. Then I'll meet you back along the base to show you how we're going to do the rest of our collar. I am back and I have the first portion of my collar all finished up. I now have 11 rows and my height is now roughly 3 inches or 8 centimeters and this is as high as I want my collar to get. So all I'm going to do from here is just connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, at the end of that row, chain 1, flip our work and then work our way back down so we aren't going to be doing any more increases or decreases. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around until we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. Then we're going to repeat everything we just did here on the other side, but once when the second one's finished up, we are not going to do a chain up of one because we can just move in with the seam right after that. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with both of our collars, and now we're going to seam everything up. So all we're gonna do is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. From here, we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure it, and we're now gonna do an outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the side. So into that first stitch into the front panel, we're gonna insert only in through that front loop. First stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, and pull through all three. And that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. Our collar is all seamed up. Now the last thing we're going to have to do is single crochet along the bottom of our piece just to clean it up. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is still flipped right side out. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. All we're gonna do is insert our yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're going to put two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then work our way all the way around. So just do the first one. My first side row is a side half double crochet row. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one. And then into the same top loop with my second single crochet. Into my following side row, which is a side slip stitch row, find that top loop, insert with a single crochet. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so our single crochet row along the bottom is all finished up. We're just going to be doing one more single crochet row to clean it up. So right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, all we're gonna do is chain one and working in the same direction that we were just previously working in, put one single crochet into every back loop. So just find that first available stitch, insert into that back loop with a single crochet. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, insert with a single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue this, making our way all the way around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left. Slip stitch into that chain space and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and we are actually all done with our piece. The last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all on the next one. Bye.